Hi everyone, I'm back, and you will excuse me if I'm rather disheveled because, whew, exhausting weekend. Uh, this is about the first time I've had a chance to sit down and nothing going on, as you might be able to actually notice behind me. Um, yeah, um, my method of unpacking after a vacation is very much throw everything onto the bed so I can get the luggage out of here, and then I will deal with it in turns. So, yeah, I have been at Metricon, I've been in Tampa, walking around the convention hall since Thursday. Um, this will be, yeah, this will be Tuesday by the time you see this, so I've spent, you know, four and a half days... Uh, doing what geeks shouldn't be doing, running around like a chicken with my head cut off. Uh, I'm beat. I am worn out. I have not had the chance to get a shower in, but, uh, I had to get this video out now because, wow, I have a lot to do now. Uh, this year's Metrocon, like, literally, uh, I'm not exaggerating when I say this is the best Metrocon I have ever been to. I honestly mean that with no exaggeration or embellishment. It is, wow, it, re really amazing, really amazing show all around. And to prove it, uh, my my pretty new HD cam captured 120 gigabytes worth of it. Yeah, I did not screw around this year. <laughs> Uh, I've got more panels than I ever have, and, uh, well, right off, right off the bat, let me apologize here, um, I didn't get the fire show this year, but this time, for once, it was intentional, um, I love the fire show, I mean, great, great to witness in person, but it's set to license music that I can't use on YouTube, and removing it means also removing the 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 crowd the crowd noise the noise of the performers the noise of the flames you miss a lot of the ambiance and since the performances are set to specific music it doesn't really work out so unfortunately yeah it, it, it's great to see and it's great to see the raw footage but I can't present it to you the way it should be and I don't want to ruin their performance that way it's disrespectful to them so that that I didn't do. Uh, Gear Grappling Extreme, which is their little uh, side wrestling show. Um, I, jeez, this is three years in a row. I've tried to get footage of it and just didn't happen. I honestly, I tried. I honestly tried. I was in the room. The camera was set up. I was ready to go. And because they had to set everything up for the match, they booted everybody out, and I never managed to get back in there. So. That was un that was unfortunate. So gear grappling, I didn't get, and I also, and this is what sucks the most, I didn't get whose line is it anime this year. I know the people who watched that one in my last Metrocon video really loved that, and so did I. It was, it was really funny, and I was really looking forward to, to it this year. But that was Saturday night at 10:30, and I was a zombie at that point because we had just come out of well. Uh, we had just come out of the uh, Takayoshi Tanimoto concert. That mean, that name probably means nothing to a lot of you. Uh, to the people who do, you realize uh, why why I was beat after that. Uh, this was a this was a, this, was, this was an awesome concert where they actually flew in a Japanese singer, uh, T Takayoshi Tanimoto, for my uh, for my Tokusatsu peeps. He was the guy who sung the Geki Ranger theme. And he sung, uh, I, I believe, an insert song for Common Rider Fives as well. Uh, for my Transformer peeps, he was the one who did the outro for Transformer Super Link. For anime people, he did Dragon Ball Kai's opening and its first ending theme. I love every one of those songs I named. This is like, Metrocon really could not have picked better for me. Like, I... I've listened to this guy's music. I've been a fan for a while. And the fact that I got to see him live, in person, amazing. Like, I never thought I'd get that chance. And, it, it oh my, man, it was once in a lifetime type thing. And it, 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 it was absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, but after that, because this is like the hardest geek out I've ever had was during this concert, because he was playing all, all my favorite songs. So, uh, yeah, I was completely drained 
by the time I could get out for Who's Line. So to all the performers of the shows, if any of you are watching, I sincerely apologize. Um, I will uh, I will again endeavor to do my best to get it next year. Okay, so that out of the way, um, I want to quickly run through some of the stuff that happened, though. I've already taken up, oh, five minutes. Yeah, yeah, this is... This is going to be a long one, I think. Uh, I'm just telling stories and, you know, what happened at the convention. Uh, this year, I was lucky enough to go press. Uh, first off, uh, to Mary and Morgan, thank you once again for entrusting this to me. This comes with a lot of responsibilities, and it's not an easy thing to get. So, the, the, uh, I, I, I sincerely appreciate the faith. Thank you again. Uh, thank you profusely through the whole thing. But, again... But that press pass allowed me to get way more access and way more stuff than I normally would. There are some very, very special things coming to this channel in the coming weeks. Please stay tuned for it. It is some really awesome stuff. So, hopefully everyone's got something to look forward to. Uh, when I, also, when I, when I said Best Metrocon Ever, a lot of that, not, not only because... A concert from a Japanese performer I really liked. The guests, of course, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, but also, Metrocon is very a very tightly run shift. Like even the voice actors will tell you, it is one of the most professionally run conventions you could ever go to. Very well organized, and I spent all day Thursday. Uh, Thursday is literally just like the final setup day for the staff. It is uh, the first registration pickup day. Uh, I got in Thursday. And I, I just I just basically walked around and observed. And the dedication and the hard work they put into this is phenomenal. Like everyone everyone there deserves way more credit than they get because they put the, they work their asses off to make sure that everyone has a good time and everyone can enjoy the show without distraction. And this year was uh, even more exceptional than usual. Uh, a lot of the tech issues that they had in the past, especially, uh, microphones in the chess match, a lot of the visual effects on the on the screens of the chess match, were gone. Uh, vastly improved this year. A uh, little problem with the wireless mics, but uh, you know that kind of happens since this was uh, the first year of the new tech group, I believe. So that happens, you know, and you know, it was it was still really cool. They got it. They got it ironed out. I mean. Like I said, they work their asses off, and you know every every one of them deserves to be thanked. Yeah. I mean, I, I I would normally sit here and go, oh man, you know this was good and that, but that could use the work. Uh, I really don't have any complaints. This was, wow, this was a great show. It was great for a tenth anniversary. The like, like I I could nitpick, like I could nit. Pick. Like, uh, Scott McNeil had only about a half hour between his autograph session ending and his first panel beginning. That's the one, that's the one thing, and I even heard people complaining about that in the panel room. It was like, haven't they learned by now that Scott is always late? Why did they put the autograph session so close to his panel? And for the most part, I, uh, for the most part, I actually do agree with that. It, it is, a, it is, it does run really, really tight, and when Scott is 20 minutes late, they still give you the hour-long panel, but that puts everyone in the room 20 minutes late for everything else they need to get to. And it puts Scott 20 minutes late for everything he's supposed to be at. Uh, it really needs, like, an hour buffer in there. It needs to be, like, the line for the autograph needs to be cut off at the same time, but there needs to be an hour before the next panel. You know, just, the buffer isn't big enough, basically. A bunch of the panels he actually made it to fine, um, fashionably late, I would call it. So, uh, yeah, just a little bit more wiggle room is all is all that really needs, and everything everything else was fine. Like, there's really nothing I can say. I mean, it's so well run, uh, absolutely amazing. Um, let, uh, let's get into like uh, let's get into a little bit more personal uh, my little experiences with the con. Uh, uh, as usual, drove up with uh, Danielle, my partner in crime, who always who always goes to MetroCon with me. 
Uh, she was a godsend this year because she reserved a lot of the seats at the panels. So I, you know, because I was always running around this and that and this and that, getting costumes and cosplay. I'm all over the place. So and she made sure I didn't do anything stupid like forget to drink water. So that uh, she she was invaluable. And we stayed with uh, John and Shauna, who oh, uh, shades and. Uh, Lady Keru over at Reviewtopia. They're con buddies, you know, so we all, you know, we always share a room, we always, you know, just kind of ride together. Uh, they were, they were fun to hang out with for the weekend. Uh, and, uh, a tag along, uh, Shanley, who was, like, an absolute blast. Like, she has a sense of humor to her that I don't get to express very often, and we expressed it back and forth for, like, three hours on Sunday night. Just hysterical person to talk to. Shanley also has this bad habit of bringing the coolest props ever for her cosplays. Last year, uh, she let, I didn't know her that year, but Shauna let her push some of her cosplay in our room just to stash it for the day because it was really heavy. So I go up and I, I go up to her hotel room. I don't know what's waiting for me. I open the door and there's a handmade portal gun sitting on the desk. Oh! <gasps> Portal gun. Everything in me to. Uh, no, I don't want to touch it. Oh, I don't want to risk breaking it. Like, no, no, it's not mine. No. Everything in me wanted to go. Ooh, ooh. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, but this year, uh, she brings this box, and from the box she pulls this sack, and when she takes the sack off, she lifts up this thing up and says, "Do you, uh, do you know what this is?" And I, 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 slight. A uh, slight geek out because it's a Stig helmet, and, and by that I don't mean it's a white racing helmet. I mean it's a Stig helmet. It is an official Stig helmet. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You you just trumped everything. I I yeah. There's no topping that. So that part was fun. Uh, we got to bring her along more often. Uh, so they made it fun. And the other thing that made it fun were all the fan encounters this year. Like, I can honestly say dozens of people came up to me this year. By dozens, okay, okay so by dozen I mean 24. That's two dozen, that counts as plural. More than that, actually. But, you know, you know, I get fan, you know, the fangirl hugs were wonderful. Thank you. It's like, now I know why Scott likes these. Because it's like, it's like the fan, you know, when you encounter a fangirl, they don't know if they'll ever see you again, ever. So it's all their affection, just like one, one warm hug. And it's like, ooh, it's nice. Uh, and you know, there there were photos, and that's always cool. Um, then something happened, and I hope you're watching because this was cool and weird at the same time. Because honestly, I'm not famous enough to do this. I'm honestly not, but I did. Uh, Thursday night, so, uh, a girl was coming out of the elevator just as I was about to head down to the, uh, down to the convention hall to wander around again, and she goes, wait, no way, I know you, I, no, no, you do videos on YouTube, oh, um, my roommate is a huge fan of yours, he watches you every day, um, would you mind if I called him so you could talk to him, like, Like I, I'm looking behind me. It was like, it was like Scott behind me? No, no. It's just, it's, 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 it, it, it was weird. It was, it was awesome, but it was weird. It's like, like I, I'm not famous enough to, I'm not famous enough to, call. So I was like, hi, yeah, I'm the YouTube guy. <laughs> it, it was still cool though. Uh, it, it's a, it's a story I can tell. So, that was fun. You know, she picks up the phone. It's like, you'll never guess who I got here. Yeah, uh, the plastic addict. No, seriously. It was fun though. I lo it was fun. Uh. Okay, and oh, I wanted to mention this because last year when I told these stories, I had to relate to uh, an unfortunate turn of events. Uh, I told you that I had entered a common writer decade video in the AMV contest because. I want to expose more people to Common Rider because it's such a cool thing and anime geeks would really dig it. So 
Um, yeah. There was nothing in the rules on the website that said anything about no subtitles allowed in the AMV. And I double-checked. I double-checked. The, the rules on the website still say nothing about subtitles. So I got disqualified for subtitles last year, even though there wasn't a written rule for it publicly posted. But this year, you know what? Not to get down, not to be let down, I try again with a Common Rider double music video. And if I can get around to it, I will probably post it now so everyone can see it. Uh, uh, this time, no. Didn't get disqualified. Uh, actually, this was a nice surprise. Uh, MetroCon 2012 presents Best Live Action to, real name, uh, for uh, their, vi their video... I'm one person, thanks, the white hat, because it's based around Shotaro and Kamen Rider Skull and, you know, all that. Oh, let's see. With War of Change by a Thousand Foot Crutch, two footage of Kamen Rider Double. I entered a Kamen Rider Double video in the contest, and it won an award. Uh, apparently, uh, I, I, talked to the, I talked to the main judge afterwards, because unfortunately I was recording a Scott McNeil panel at the time. If it was anything else, I would have skipped it and gone to the AMV contest, but it was a Scott McNeil panel. And when you see the Scott McNeil panel, you'll realize why I don't regret the decision. Uh, no, but uh, John was nice enough to pick up the award for me and uh, put it in the hotel room. And I, I met the judge later on and sat on Sunday in the dealer room, and it's like, I'm so sorry I couldn't be there because it's the first award they gave out, and I wasn't there. And they'd never given out, they had live action entries before in the past, but they'd never given out an award for one. But this, this got their attention. They liked this one. And the way I could tell was the judge was telling me that when she was going through the videos, she was watching that one. And her mom came up and, and looked at the screen while the, and the video, while the video was playing. And the mother goes, okay, I want to watch that. So, yeah, my... My plan to expose more people to Kamen Rider and get a few more Tokusatsu fans in the world apparently succeeded because even the judges want to go watch Kamen Rider Double. And you should if you're watching. And my notes just went to screensaver. I'm back now. Still, awesome. I, I'm humbled. I'm humbled because winning was not the goal, but it is, it is an honor. That, so, to any, if anyone involved was watching, thank you. Um... As long, oh, that's, I guess that's the beginning of show and tell time, so I might as well get the autographs out of the way for starters. The Geki Ranger CD, as signed by Takayoshi Tanimoto. This was awesome. I, I kind of wish he signed it in Japanese, but this was still cool, because, um, yeah, unfortunately, since, of course, he's a Japanese singer, not a lot of people knew him there. I, I really wish his autograph line was bigger, because the guy deserves it. He's an awesome singer. And... Uh, they had like a little booth set up for his merchandise because it's an expensive trip. You know, this is a little bit of compensation and it gives you something to easily autograph if you come up to the line. So, uh, not good enough for me. I love this, I love the Geki Ranger theme. So, I went out and I imported the CD and I brought it to him and he was amazed that someone came up with a Geki Ranger CD. And, and, that was great. I like. I felt bad that his lines were shorter than they really deserved to be, but I was happy that he could at least know that he has a fan in America. He honestly does, because, man, keep in mind, I've been going to Metrocon for a long time. I've met a lot of incredible voice actors. I've done a lot of incredible things. And it's, it's hard to get me to really hardcore geek out. When they announced that he was coming, and I'd get to see him in concert, I'd get, the, I'd get an autograph from him. I geeked hardcore, like harder than I ever had in my life. In fact, and I wish I could post this, oh, I wish I could. During closing ceremonies on Sunday evening, he comes out to encore, an encore for Dragon Soul again, the theme to Dragon Ball Kai. But he mixes in the English lyrics from the American dub. So it's a mix American Japanese version. You know, it's not recorded by. You know, it's not on a CD anywhere. It's not on iTunes. He doesn't like. And as far as I know, this is his. 
he doesn't appear in America often, so I can't imagine he does this very often. And you can tell he doesn't do it often because he had a cheat sheet in his hand for the English lyrics. So, but it was incredible. It was, it was an, oh, it was, it, it was awesome. I have it on, I have it on film and I can never show it because it's, it's licensed material. <sighs> maybe someday, maybe someday. For now, it just sits in digital cyberspace. See, or, or the others. Okay, you know, so that I went out of my way for. Unfortunately for, like, the others, uh, I had to use what I had on hand because, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll explain as I go here. Crispin Freeman, who signed my Advent Children DVD, I wanted him to sign something as Elgatus because Slayers is my favorite anime. And you'd be surprised. Elgatus doesn't have a lot of merchandise. Like, a bunch of pencil boards and, like, some computer mouses, and that's, like, it. Um... And that are like animation cells that go for like, what, 50 bucks if it's a really awful shot of him where like half of him's cut off and he's making this really weird face. Or he's blurry at the time or something like that. And it's like 200 bucks for like a really good pose. So that's kind of sucked. Uh, Crispin also signed uh, my Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, he signed it for Will Turner as well, but all I really wanted was Setzer, because I don't care what you say, Final Fantasy VI was the pinnacle. <sighs> hate, hate, I can feel it already, come on, let me have it. I don't care. And, uh, Richard Epcar signed it as well, since he was handsome. Uh, I'm a, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll, I will confess, I'm an old Digimon fan. Uh, I loved Etamon, Myotismon, but... Etamon and Myotismon's toys are that big! So I can't really have them sign that, can I? So, uh, and that moves on to, of course, the main event, Scott McNeil. Uh, there's the classic Sicarius, the modern upgrade of his very first character, signed there at the... Yeah, there, there at the bottom. I want to get the original flip shot signed, but no one on eBay wants less than 75 bucks for it, which is ridiculous because I've seen people have trouble getting rid of them for 25. Ugh. And yeah, the other one I showed you before in my going away video, the Jimmy Lee, autographed, nice, me there. I'm running out of obscure characters. I was going to get Wrath from Mummies Alive for him to sign. And it's a good thing I didn't, because the girl in front of me was dressed up and cosplayed as Wrath for Scott. And it was, like, an incredible costume. So, I'm glad I didn't have to ride those uh, curta those coattails. I had my own bit of McNeil insanity to bring. And it's in this box. And no, I'm still not showing it to you. Um, tell you what, tune in next week when I'll probably be posting the autograph signing for Scott. And you will see it then. Trust me, it's worth the it's worth the build up, because this is one of the more lunatic things I've ever done. And as you see more footage, you will see how far it goes into lunacy. Because it was actually very epic. Uh, the guests themselves this year were actually really really cool. Um, oh, there's Scott. Of, oh, there's Scott of course, and. Uh, Spoiling nothing, I got to spend more time with Scott this year than I ever have before. So, uh, that'll tell you something went down, and you, you'll see it. Uh, the guy went through absolute hell to get there. There. Um, he related the story in his, in his panel, so it's, I, I'm, I'm assuming I'm okay to say it here. Um, crap, the battery's gone. Um, his passport was expired when he got to the airport. And uh, tried to put in for an emergency one. It takes like 24 hours minimum. He got it done in 12. He catches the red eye to Dallas and then over to Tampa and rocks up like 1 a.m. Like the day of the con. Uh, by and and uh, he, he was recently coming off a broken foot too, so he had to run through the terminal just kind of hobbling on it. So. Hell or high water, the guy should not have made it, but he did. And you, you know, the, the dude loves MetroCon because that that took some serious like guts to do. Uh, so so yeah, 
moved heaven and earth to get there. And, you know, that's why we love him. Uh, Crispin. Crispin was, like... Unfortunately, I didn't get to experience much of Crispin last year because I, uh, I kept having scheduling problems with his panels. But this year I made sure to catch them, and I'm glad I did. Uh, because the, the man is honestly fascinating. Like, the level of depth he gets into is incredible. He knows so... It, like, I think I know a lot about anime. I think I know a lot about Super Sentai. This guy knows Super Sentai. I talked Super Sentai with Crispin Freeman. Imagine, yeah. One of those dork things that I can say I did, and it's awesome to be able to say it. And he knows this stuff so well. Just absolutely incredible. Uh, let's see, I'm looking at my little cheat sheet again. Takayoshi, I already talked about. Richard Epcar, who, who was... Richard Epcar is uh, really funny this year. Uh, he, he has a very... Um, Oh, I shouldn't be forgetting his name, but my brain is jelly right now. Yeah, Ash from Evil Dead. Um, don't correct me in the comments, by the way, because I'll remember it by then. And I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be forgetting his name because it's, it, uh, it's a geek faux pas to forget it. But you'll excuse me. I've been rushing around and sleep deprived for an entire weekend. I, I, it's not there. But he has that kind of he has a kind of B movie quality to him. There's no offense to that, you know. It's just the right level of cheese to be really entertaining and amusing. So that he made that was fun. That was fun, and he played off so well with uh, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who was there as well. Who, strangely enough, was next door to us in the hotel, which was really weird when we were watching Toonami Saturday night. We were watching Ghost in the Shell, and she is right next door. That was funny. <laughs> I I really wish we could have just like, knock knock knock. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're watching Ghost in the Shell. You want to come in? <laughs> I wish we could like, like neighborly thing. Go down to breakfast. You know that kind of thing. But you don't want to bother her. The, the, her and Richard played off each other so well. I mean, the panel videos this year are hysterical with those two in them, just because they know each other's sense of humor so well, and they they just work. And some of the most hysterical things had all the guests rolling in the aisles. Uh, yeah, stuff you've got to see. Those panels, I don't know when they will be going up. I want to get them up as soon as possible, but, you know, they take three days. You know, it takes me three days to post them unless I post in one gargantuan video, which I could do, but it's a little hard to digest an hour-long video in one sitting. Uh, actually, tell me that in the comments. Okay, do you prefer the way I've been doing it the last few years of 20-minute segments that are a little easy to sit through and then move on or come back to part two later? Or would you prefer one big chunk and just get the whole panel one day, no waiting? Okay, so tell me that in the comments. Don't, don't correct me about Ash. Don't correct me about him. I, and I can, yes, I can see his big chin right now in, in my mind, and I just can't. The, the brain is non existent. Just so tell me, don't tell me, don't correct me on that in the comments. Tell me how you want me to post the panels this year in the comments, because that's helpful. Uh, let's see. There's something else. There's, there's, a, there's a weird thing happening this con, and I actually feel bad in a way. Um,. Uh, the dealer's room this year, and I'm quite amazed, had a lot of Common Rider merchandise. There were like three or four tables that had Common Rider stuff. And I don't mean just like the usual, just like little keychains and things. No, Figuarts and SIC Decades and uh, big giant head Forze toys. It's like really, really, really cool stuff. Uh, yeah, Kid and Candy Store. And what amazed me was that it was selling. As the weekend went, the shelves got thinner and thinner. The piles of like vinyl figurines and gashapon figurines were getting smaller and smaller. Oh man, it was cool. It was it it made me proud to see as someone who wants Common Rider to get the popularity he deserves over here. Um yeah, I had a lot of pride. I was like it's it's growing. It's gaining. It's really cool. Uh Here's but here's where and like every year at MetroCon for you, for those who don't know I wear Common Rider belts 
I wear the belts from the show. Because when else am I going to get to wear them outside and not be the weird one? Okay? There's a guy dressed up as Rainbow Dash on the opposite side of the hall, and he's chasing after a guy dressed as a banana with a crown on his head. I'm not the weird one for wearing a toy on my waist. And I was amazed that the belt was getting so many recognitions. Like, people recognize the Forza driver. Like, whoa. That's awesome. I, I met people, I met dealers in the dealer room who had, like, tokusatsu nights with their friends. It was like, why can't you live down here? I want to go. <laughs> uh, but that's where it got really weird, because there's one dealer I see every year. Uh, for everyone who's ever watched one of my Metricon videos and you saw the giant table of Dragon Ball Z figures, yeah, it, it's his table. Uh, this year, he says, same layout of Dragon Ball Z figures. It's awesome. Uh, but I look over around the corner, and he's got a pile of Kamen Rider stuff. Like uh, the vinyl figurines, the soft foobies. He had. he had a bunch of like bagged vinyl figurine, uh, posed figures. Like large scale like posed figures. Whoa. Um, yeah, you'll see a result of that. But what was really weird was, and I'll, I'll go ahead and spoil it, because at the end of the video I'm going to show off the haul that I got this year, and it's it's an epic thing to behold. Uh, I asked, like, and one of the things I picked up was this uh, large, like, stronger keychain, like three inch tall, giant head, even by stronger standards giant head like light up keychain thing and I I put on this pile of figures that I'm buying which you'll see at the end of this video and I hand the whole thing to him rings me up and he, go, and he picks up the stronger oh stronger rider oh he's my favorite what you know it's weird because I here, let me quick prop grab I pick up my I swing my bag around that I always carry around and I show him that my little charge up stronger than I got at Metrocon last year. And it's like, oh, oh, nice. It's like, now we, like, I've seen this guy five Metrocons in a row. Never knew he knew he was a Common Rider fan or that we share one of our favorite writers. Wow. <laughs> it, it was just really, it was just really random and it was really cool. Like, like, I wish he had a website for all the stuff he sells at Metrocon. He doesn't. Like, I'd promote the hell out of this guy. Because he, he it was very cool. So, um, actually, hang on. Let me, like, hang on, hang on a second. I'm going to do this, and it's going to be very unprofessional. I'm probably not even going to cut this because it's not worth anything. Because my battery has, like, seven minutes left on it. And, hang on, uh, 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 plugged in. We're good. So, yeah, that happened. Um, there's going to be a slight change up in this year's format for the Metrocon videos. I'm not, I might completely switch them up, make like all the cosplay one video, make all the dealer room footage one video. Uh, I might break it up that way instead of doing the day one, day two, day three documentary thing. Um, but again, tell me in the comments, do you want to do day one, day two, day three, or do it by section? Okay, all this stuff here, all this stuff here, all this stuff in this video. Um... That'll get a little spotty, especially when I start having to edit together the panel footage and the highlights from that and the highlights from the chess match, for instance. E epic chess match, by the way. If a performer is watching, you were marvelous. It's, it's, oh, God, brain jelly. I don't know why I'm doing these things. But more importantly for, um, more importantly for the dealer room footage, instead of just showing you the cool stuff they have, I'm going to show you where to get it. Okay, for instance, I want you to take a look. Awesome, awesome shirt that I picked up. Lion O's. For the growing thunder kitten in your family. This epic shirt came from tshirtbordello.com. The website address will appear at the bottom as I go through the booths. If you like this shirt, and I'm, per I'm pretty sure you can get this shirt right now on their site. Well, they had a ton of funny shirts, actually. Some really good shirts, like Christopher Walken, a zombie Christopher Walken shirt. The Walken Dead. I don't know, I like that. So, yeah, that's available at that website. So, yeah, if you like it, go get it.
and that's going to be true of all the dealers that I uh, see. At least the way they had sites. Not all of them do. Speaking of dealers, I like to promote um, Sanshi, who you saw the Pokemon badge review for. Like I said, the first thing I was going after were the Gen 5 badges, and there they are in metal and gold trimmed glory. Uh, uh, uh. I've got all the badges now. I'm better than you now, Ash. Yeah, I got them all. I caught all these. I got 40 badges. How many you got? And while I was there, picked up the hard containers from Zelda. Like I said, these things are brilliant. Genius idea. And for those who asked during the video, I did ask if they were if they were thinking about doing the Digimon crests as well. And they and it's a distant maybe. They're looking into it. That's not a promise of anything. That's not insurance or anything like that. They just said, we'll look into it. I hope so. Like I just said. Digimon Man. Okay, so that's all that. Um, let's see, what else? What else? Well, I guess since I'm showing off uh, merchandise, I should go ahead and show off the swag for the year. Okay, now we're getting into the nitty gritty. Where do we start? Okay, I'm going to start with this. There is Takeyoshi Tanimoto's CD he was selling. Because the guy flew a huge distance to get there. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to support the man's trip. So I got I got to take a listen to that. Very cool. So that's that's cool stuff. And I guess I'll show you this right away since I already spoiled it. A little stronger giant keychain for the light up eyes. Let's see can I get see if I can get to the button. Yeah, it's kind of dim, but there you go. You can see it. I will buy anything that's stronger related. <laughs> So that's, let's see, what else? Hmm. Hmm. I will warn you, since there are so many dealers with common Rider stuff, it's predominantly common Rider. Like, I I tried to balance it. I honestly did. But unfortunately, just not a lot came out. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and show off what uh, the rest of the fellow Stronger fan was selling me. This, which is still in the box, so you can't hardly see it. This is a digital watch based off of Ichigo's belt. It's a little flip open thing. I, I hate watches, but this one, this one I would wear. So, ah, uh, I'm just placing it around so mu so I don't just rebuild my stack. Could this easier to? Um, Agito Trinity form. This is my very first soft fubi, this vinyl series that they do forever. Uh, so, my first chance to experience it. I know it's not high quality, there's only like three points of articulation, but I, I like have, being able to have the opinion. Um, let's see what else I get. Oh, these. See that? No, and yeah, for those who see, yeah, his leg is not janked. It's just popped off its ball joint. These are little G.I. Joe scale uh, Agito figures. You're going to notice a theme here. For some reason, this guy who suddenly decided, who also loves Kamen Rider and Stronger and suddenly decided to start selling Kamen Rider stuff at his booth, yeah, turns out he also put out a ton of Agito stuff. My favorite Common Rider series, by the way. Uh, so, this was the first series. Uh, these came up really dirt cheap on eBay lately, but the seller wanted like five bucks plus shipping for each one, so it was like 12 bucks each. This, I got all five, I got the set of five for 20 bucks. So, I'll just show you. You know, you got gills. Of course, you have gills. My 100% my favorite rider. G3, and then all three flavors of Agito. Really cool. And for those who know what the Motion Revive series is like, these are Motion Revive sized. So they'll go right into that group and fit right in. And I love that. I love that. Okay. Um, I guess this is the next thing. This shocked me to actually see these. Figuarts. Arts. Common Rider figure arts. There's a guy who had like two shelves full of these, and by the end of the weekend, half of them were cleared out. Go Common Rider Metrocon fans. Okay, so the two I've been putting off forever, Fies, and Ultimate Kuga. I love this design. Just been, I don't know, just never get around to getting them. Uh, important fact, uh, important thing to keep in mind when you're shopping in the dealer room for a convention. Always remember what these things cost online, and remember to include the shipping cost. 
to, before you decide whether or not the con price is worth it. These were about what I would have paid uh, retail before shipping. So that was my justification. Um, let's, let's continue the common Rider kick. But I'm bump chink. And I will show you these guys. This is what caught my attention at this booth. Rider kick giant post. These are 11 inch tall Agito and Gills. This is the biggest Gills figure I've ever seen. And like as soon as I saw that, I was like instantly drawn to that booth. I didn't even realize it was the Dragon Ball booth until I got Oh! Oh, it's that place. Uh, oh, okay. So I believe that I believe that's actually all my common writer stuff. Um, little random odds and ends now. We'll get into some more anime stuff, and then we'll go to the big finale. Uh, my first set of Gundam markers. Um, I've got a model kit build review coming up. Uh, some of you know what it is. I will most likely be applying these to that, so it looks better. I normally don't advocate reviewing something you've customized because then you are falsely representing what someone will buy right out of the box. But I really want to see this thing at its best. I want to show you what it looks like at its best. So I'll be giving the liner the liner markers a try. So I finally have done the markers. That's cool. Um, one more figure art. Vegeta. Uh, the, the good Vegeta design. I, re I really dig this this like first earth design Vegeta I, it was weird like I didn't know like Super Saiyan 3 Goku was out I didn't know Trunks was out already and the dealer room had both um yeah um I don't know I, I got the Goku before and I kind of got burned on Goku because I really didn't like how he was engineered so I was kind of hesitant to both of those trunks. Trunks probably would have been okay, but I didn't want to spend another fifty bucks they wanted for him. Uh, yeah, I'm only gonna go exorbitant price so many times. Uh, what next? What next? Oh, we'll do this one next. Ryobone Panty from the anime I won't name because kids, you should not be watching this anime. This is a absolutely filthy, disgusting anime with. Uh, a lot of content no kid should ever be around. I'm serious. Don't, don't watch. But for those who do know who the character is, uh, yeah, awesome figure, tons of accessories, comes with Chuck. I love that. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to, I, I can't, I, 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 there's no way I can phrase my anticipation toward this figure without it coming out dirty. So I will keep my mouth closed, I will set her down, and I will move on. Uh, this is as close to a Transformers I brought home. Fire Valkyrie VF-19 Custom. It's a Macross. More importantly, this is a Macross that burned me at Metrocon way, way long ago. Because I actually saw one of these, this is again from the Dragon Ball booth. This guy took, like, this guy took a fortune from me. My, wa my wallet feels violated by this guy. I saw one of these three years ago for, like, 40 bucks. Okay? And I saw it on Sunday when I was, on Sunday, when I was, like, seven bucks shy of being able to afford it. And it's a good thing, because uh, that money had to go to the parking garage. So, good thing I didn't go out and buy it like an idiot. But now I have it, and now I can actually enjoy the uh, I, I can enjoy the robustness of a Macross figure without uh, without digging out my G1 Jetfire. So, because oh, I, I actually I really dig this design, really dig this design. I think I think after MetroCon, I, I I really wanted to find this thing online, and at the time I could only find it for like 120 bucks. So like I could have spent 40 and got it. This time I only spent 20 so, okay, so patience pays off, I guess, or, you know, just be a complete cheap bastard, whichever one you want to prefer. Either way, I have it now, so that's an old wound that is healed. Bravo. I, be um, I think that is it for the stuff I bought, except for the finale. Now, this, this one in particular was a triumph. 
In fact, I'll make a note here. Huge success. I love it, I love it. This is a plush portal turret. Oh man, and it, it is neat. neat. Uh, motion sensor. Sir, it makes all the it makes noises. It it makes the phrases from the game when it's turned on and idle. When you pass by it, it says one of the appropriate phrases from the game. It also says the appropriate phrases from the game when you knock them over. Oh my God, that is so cool. Ah. Oh. I love that I found this. Ugh. I gotta use it in like videos as like, soon as possible. You take my little lab assistant from now on. I don't have a name for him. I'm not naming my turret. My turret is named Turret. It's original. So that that is uh, that is my haul this year. And <sighs> anime cons are expensive, man. You know. When I go through it like that fast, it doesn't seem like all that much, but it is. It's like a ton of stuff, and I don't know where I'm going to put any of it, but I don't care because it's all really cool stuff. So, this video has gone on way, 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 way longer than I thought. I might split it up into two parts. I might just put little uh, time annotations in the description below. Either way, if you're listening to it this long, it doesn't matter because you've already watched all of it. So, why the hell am I even saying it now? I need sleep. Okay. So, um, for everyone who I know is going to be watching this, for Mary and Morgan, you did an amazing, amazing job. Uh, you, thank you for your trust. Thank you for your openness. Uh, thank you for putting, thank you and everyone there for putting on, you know, one of the best shows I've ever been to. It, it really was a privilege. I, I thoroughly, thoroughly amazed by the whole weekend. Uh, for my friends who are watching this, uh, Carl, eh, he hates me right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, uh, and to all the, all the fans I met there, uh, if you're watching this, it was awesome meeting you. Thank you for making it such a memorable event. Uh, I love each and every one of you. I really do. I'm just not in love with you. I mean, I'm not going to call. Except for the one that I did call. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, I hope to see everyone again next year. I hope to see more people next year. Because uh, Metricon keeps growing and growing and growing. And I, uh, I, the place is very special to me. So I, I, I'm, I feel very privileged that I was part. I, was, I, I felt like I was part of it this year. I felt like I was integral in some small way. So, uh, so, uh, I, I'm getting way too emotional about this. Need, sleep, wrap up. Uh, so, th uh, thank you for watching this long, if you did. And please stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to sprinkle in the Metrocon footage through the next, probably a couple of months, because there's so much of it to go through. I got 120 gigs of footage. Um, and I'll see what I can do about uh, a lot of the things that I did record. I'll see just how much I can post and how much we can do with it. Um, stay tuned for it. It really is incredible stuff, so you're not going to be disappointed. Uh, so for everyone I met at Metrocon, I will see you all next year. And for everyone who's just waiting for me to do a toy review, yeah, I've got plenty of those coming up too. Uh, just need to recuperate a little bit and yeah right back to plastic. I will see you guys then.